Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. With the launch of X570 and especially with all the mainboard launches here in Computex we had a ton of videos where we were talking about the power consumption of the X570 chipset, the FCH of AMD, the upcoming or now that you can probably see this video, the released chipset, especially during Computex when we saw all those new mainboards and when we, will, when we saw that all the mainboards are now equipped with chipset fans with few exceptions then of course we had discuss discussions about the power consumption of the chipset a lot of reports were stating it's 11 watts some were saying it's 15 watts some were saying it's just something in between 11 and 15 watt but we don't really know the numbers of the chipset power consumption and that's what we will do in this video we will actually measure the power consumption of x570 which is not really as easy as it sounds Measuring the chipset power consumption is not as easy as it sounds. It's not as easy as just measuring the current that's flowing to an EPS connector, for example, what I usually do when I'm measuring the CPU power consumption. That's simply not that easy because we don't have wires going to the chipset. The chipset is directly soldered to the mainboard and that's how the um, voltage supply is also connected to the FCH. So. We cannot simply use a current clamp like this. Usually I'm using a current clamp like that. If you're not familiar with this device, you simply attach it to a wire and then you can measure the current which is flowing across the wire. You can display it on here. And then we have to multiply the current with the voltage to get the actual power consumption. We have five different voltages going to the FCH. So we have 1.2 volt and 1 volt power supply, which is the main power source for the FCH, for the chipset. Then we have in addition 1, 1.8 volt and we have three, uh, no, we have two 3.3 volt rails going to the chipset. The 1.8 rail and 3.3 rails um, have only a very little power consumption, but we will still measure them because even if they're together only one watt, if you're talking about let's say 11 to 15 total it could still be like a significant impact of like 10 percent we will see how high the power supply at uh, the power consumption or the current of the 1.8 and 3.3 volt supplies is it's probably not that much but we will still measure it just to make sure we have really accurate um, readings really accurate uh, results one problem of measuring the fch power consumption is also the utilization obviously we also know or at least amd said that because of the pci express 4.0 power consumption or the 4.0 capability the power consumption of the fch will be higher the problem is i simply don't have a pci express 4.0 device i also asked or talked to some of the suppliers like Team Group or Gigabyte who already announced some PCI Express 4.0 SSDs during Computex. Unfortunately, I was not able to get any of those devices because it's simply too early. So for this video, we will just stay with some normal NVMe devices for the moment. I set up this system here with the Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard because I have schematics of the board so I can check where exactly the voltage rails are attached to the PCH. In this setup I'm using an 8 core Ryzen 3000 CPU. Um, the memory doesn't really matter and I also attached a VGA over a riser cable simply because it's um, a little bit more convenient for me because we have to access the back of the mainboard. Some of the components we have to unsolder where we have to attach wires are on the back of the board, some are on the front of the board, so I want to have as little as uh, as little components attached to the board as possible. I'm running the OS currently, it's Windows 10, of another NVMe drive which is directly attached to the CPU. I don't have any SATA drives or anything connected right now to the, to the FCH, so the FCH in this condition should have the lowest power consumption. Then we will just attach like an NVMe drive, attach some SATA drives and then maybe perform some benchmarks and see if we can utilize the FCH more and see how the power consumption changes. But first we have to check all the points and also attach wires to the points where the voltage is supplied to the FCH. I will show you the voltage supplies quickly so we just take ground from here and then we have this inductor on the top if we measure the voltage here it's 1.2 volt then we have the additional inductor to the right if we measure this one we get 1.075 volt roughly on the inductor on the right so we will have to remove both of those inductors or basically we're removing one leg of the inductor attaching a cable and then Back, um, yeah, closing the loop again. Then we have one small SMD resistor on the top left here. 
which measures 3.3 volt. It's basically a bridge, so it's a zero ohm resistor. We can see that by measuring the right side as well. You can see it's the same voltage on both sides. Same goes to this one on the bottom here. Those are the two 3.3 volt SMD resistors. So we will have to replace those tiny resistors with wires where we can then measure the current. On the back side, we have those tiny resistors on the back of the FCH. If we measure the voltage on both sides of them, both are reading 1.8 volt. So both of them will have to be removed. I'm replacing them again with wires. So basically making a big loop, closing it back. So we have the loop closed and then we can attach the current clamps to this. Warum ist das so eine Here we have the two loops from the back with 1.8 volt, a thicker one because the resistor was thicker. I'm not sure how much current is flowing over this, so just made it a little bit thicker. And the thinner one for the thinner resistor also secured it with some insulation tape. Now we will simply quickly check if everything still works. To measure the power, I will use those current clamps right here. They're a little bit more complicated to use because it's basically um, a DC to milliampere converter or it's a converter from milliampere to voltage. What it means is that it's reading out the current that's flowing through the cable which will go through here. And then it's sending a voltage to the digital multimeter right here. So we have a scale right here which says it's currently set to 1 millivolt per 10 milliampere. So if it's reading 10 milliamps going through the cable it will send 1 millivolt to the digital multimeter we can zero it here on this button. If we just simply measure the small wire right here, it's the small 1.8 volt and it's currently reading between 9 and 10 millivolt, which means that it's about 90 to 100 milliamps. During the German video, it was just a little bit lower, it was around 70, but it's currently about 0.1 amps, so 100 milliamps. Checking the thicker wire, you can see it's fluctuating a bit, but it's really not much. It's something between yeah, 10 and 50 milliamps, so it's almost neglectable. Meanwhile, two days later, I decided to also repeat the same kind of testing with a Crosshair 7 Hero, so the X470 board that's very similar to the one we, which we already tested, which was the Crosshair 8 Hero with X570. If we just compare the X470 to X570, luckily X470 only has four voltage rails. The small wire on the bottom left and the small wire on the bottom right, both of them are 3.3 volts, so only very small power supply to the chipset. I still recorded 
the power or the current flowing through those wires. Then the two wires on top here, the thicker ones, are the main power supply to the X470 chipset. The one on the top right is with 2.5 volt and the one on the top left, the one where I had to unsolder the inductor on here and added the wire on here. That's the one where we can set the voltage through BIOS and stock it was 1.15 volt. I'm back after almost two weeks of testing. Finally finished all my testing on X470 and also X570. So we have all the comparison values. Luckily, I also was able to get a Corsair MP600 generation four. So we also have generation four PCI Express SSD comparison values. We will get exact numbers for the power consumption of the chipset X570. Before we go to the exact comparison of the, of the chipset power consumption, I just want to show you how much in detail this is actually going the measurement. One example, this is the situation where X570 is completely in idle and no devices are attached. No NVMe drive, no SATA drive, no PCI Express drives in the slot or anything like that. In this situation, you can see we have six voltages. We have 1.075, 1 1.2, 2 times 1.8, 2 times 3.3 volt voltage rails. On the bottom underneath the voltages, you can see the current which I measured across those voltages. For example, 5.11 amp, 1.24 amps and all of that. Those currents multiplied with the voltages will result in the power consumption of the individual rail. Adding up those power consumptions will give us the total power which you can see on the right in this case was 7.2. 3 watt. That's just how much in detail I measured the power consumption of the chipset. For X470 it was luckily not that much hassle because it was only 4 voltage supply rails going to X470 and uh, all of them were on the front and on the, on the back so that was a lot more convenient than X570. Looking at the results, in this chart you can see three lines, blue lines on top, those are the X470 comparison values. The first case is just X470 in idle, no devices attached, no NVMe drive attached, no SATA drive attached and just in idle in Windows. I had a power consumption of about 2.9 watt, which is really not much. That's a power consumption you can dissipate just through the PCB of the mainboard. No additional cooling unit would be needed for a power of about 3 watt. The X470 chipset in combination with the Samsung 960 EVO in idle will result in a power consumption of about 3.4 watt, while putting it under load with Crystal Disk Mark, just a benchmark it will result in 4.1 watt. X570 in comparison has a much much higher power consumption already in idle. Already in idle with no devices attached it has a power consumption of 7.38 watt. Adding the Samsung 960 EVO 512 GB in idle is 8.2 watt. Under load with Crystal Disk Mark it's 8.55 watt. Adding SATA drives in addition will result in about 0.5 to 0.7 watt increase. So about 9 to 9.2 watt total power consumption adding two Patriot 128 GB SSDs also using Crystal Disk Mic on all drives at the same time. Now for the last test also adding a PCI Express graphics card in the bottom slot which is attached to the chipset directly also putting some additional load with Fermic onto the GPU resulting in a power consumption of 9.76 watts. Now getting to the interesting part adding the Corsair MP600 generation 4 or basically just using the MP600 generation 4 attached to the X570 chipset with no other devices attached so no GPU in the bottom slot no SATA drives or anything like that it has a power consumption of 8.63 watt in idle and 8.86 watt under load with Crystal Disk Mark. Also I checked the performance was perfectly in line. I almost had 5 GB per second transfer rate in Crystal Disk Mark, which is exactly what the Corsair SSD is advertised with. So just below our, underneath uh, 5 GB per second. So that was in line. It was not that the speed was not there or anything like that. But it's really interesting that the PCI Express Gen 4 SSD has basically the same power consumption than Gen 3 SSD. That's not what I expected because everybody kept telling us when this came out, when X570 was released, that the chipset has a much higher power consumption because of PCI Express Gen 4. But this is the exact opposite. Increasing the power consumption by, I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 watt 
for going from Gen 3 to Gen 4 NVMe drive, I don't know, that's, you can almost neglect that. That's almost measurement tolerance. That's not even one watt. So why does X570 have such a high power consumption? I, I really don't get it. Um, X570 in general, or the structure, I don't know, the, the whole chipset just has much higher power consumption than X570, uh, X470. And that's not related to Gen 4, at least not using Gen 4 devices. I'm really not sure what's, what's the reason for that or why this chipset always has this really, really high power consumption. Especially, I mean, also comparing this to C390, even X299 has much lower power consumption than X570. But, but, looking at the cooling solutions, I really have no idea what's going on with those cooling solutions. What you can see right now on my mainboard is a 2 euro cheap old chipset heatsink, which I bought from eBay. And I just mounted it to my mainboard and using all the devices combined in the case where I almost have 10 watt power, power consumption, it has a peak temperature of 74 degrees Celsius with like almost no airflow. I have a tiny bit of airflow from the, from the VGA here, but that's it. And that's a very tiny chipset cooler. And that's 74 degrees Celsius. So why do we have those massive cooling solutions on those chipsets with fans, with, like, with active fans in 2019? I don't get it. Why do we not have like proper chipset coolers with just a little bit more surface area? Just make, just take a cooler like this, increase the surface area a little bit. There's so much space left around this. You could just increase or use the same type of cooler, increase the surface area by 50% and cooling wise, it should be perfectly fine. There would be no need for active cooling fans. So I'm not really sure what's, I, I really have no idea what's going on like what the reason for this is. Yeah, so much about X570 power consumption. I will try to find out more what's maybe the reason behind this, why we have those massive cooling solutions, heat sinks, active fans, while they're not really necessary and why is the power consumption so much higher than X470, even if you're not using Gen 4 drives. That's the main thing. I thought, or people will tell us during Computex, power consumption is so much higher using Gen 4 devices, which is absolutely not correct. We're using a Gen 4 device and it's the same, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe you have a theory what this is about. Let me know your expectations, theories in the comments about X570 cooling solutions, power consumptions, especially in Gen 4. That's it. That's the end of the video. See you next time.